All right, you guys, how's it going? And today we're going to be basically going over the Ply Inventory system, and we're going to be looking at the creation of items. We're going to be looking at editing the item database, uh, looking at the custom editor for Ply Game, and we're going to be looking at tweaking some of the values that I've given as defaults. Uh, so you guys can customize your own items and put your own spins on them. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump into this stuff. So at the start here, um, I've created a lot of sample inventory items for you guys. You know, that covers things like quest items, equipables, consumables, um, usable items, etc. Right? So from the top here, let's just look at uh, our, our simple, simple item, like a quest item, right? Which would be handled, obviously, all by you guys, depending on whatever you guys want to do with that stuff. I leave all that freedom to you guys. But basically, every item is going to have a base uh, local string variable, which is called class. Now, if you guys remember all the way from the first video, I believe, um, I already went over with you guys exactly what the player needs to have on them. They need to have a string, capital C, class for them that's relevant to whatever class that they are. Now, when you're doing all your stuff for your game and you're setting their classes of what they can be, make sure you set this class here. This has to be made or else the game and the system can't track, you know, what items are made for this class or what items are made for that class and what items can be used by all classes. Okay. So do know this is something you have to have. Okay. So for the items, they also have a class, same way the player does. But depending on whatever item that you're using, right, it's going to be either be bound to barbarians, bound to assassins, bound to spinning meat men. You know, whatever is pertinent to your game is what's going to you're going to be put inside of this field, and it has to be the same across the board, right? If one dude is named barbarian, you know, and his class is capital B, then every item has to have a capital B, as long as your player's is capital B. Them, all right so do note that it is case sensitive so when you're working off of all this stuff um obviously certain lines are going to be usable by everybody and that's when we give it a tag right here this class string not a bool class string of universal now it does have to be universal if you go into the script um, for the actual item the ply inventory item you can change this if you don't like the name universal universal is just the simple way to get it across so that way you guys know that this can be used by all people all classes um, of all ranges so it can be changed if you want it i really don't see an issue uh, with the naming convention but you know if you guys need it it's there just look into the play inventory script um, but yeah so in the actual script it's a simple script you know it looks a little lengthy but it's actually not too crazy so uh, like i told you guys from the start i tried to expose every single event that i fired my scripts to you guys so that way you guys can do your own logic right so if you equip an item it's going to look for this event and this event does have to be in your blocks there does have to be that there it's a, it's going to look for this event when you unequip it's going to look for this event when you use consume quest items when you buy an item when you sell an item when you you know uh, hover over an item for a tooltip you know all this stuff it's going to look for all these things um, so in the blocks before we get into the actual item goodies here let's just look at the blocks okay so in the box when we equip an item we want equip information and this is going to be more pertinent in the actual equipable items but just know that this is here and we're going to be going more in depth with all this stuff. Um, so that's this is where the equip uh, data is going to be held. Same thing for unequip. Uh, same thing for usable, consumables, and quests. Now, usables and quests um, aren't tied to anything across the board for me. Now, usable and quests can be something totally different for you. So if you use this item and it's a quest item, you're going to want to put your use your all your quest stuff for this item inside of this use quest item event right so you can actually give your player some quest you know which you can do in the dialogue quest i think uh, 
think there's a give quest or set quest status. That might be it. I don't know. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you can do all that stuff there. Uh, tools tip restriction. You don't ever want to change this. This item is always static. Don't ever change it. But basically what it does, it'll set a temporary class variable to the tooltip uh, variable that's in the canvas, right? So we'll look for that tooltip uh, class. And it'll say, okay, if this, if it didn't find it, if it did indeed find it, then we're gonna set the restriction text on that restriction game object. And we're gonna set the text on that text component to required class space, semicolon space, uppercase of what the class variable is on this thing. Now, what the script says is if this class, this apply inventory item, it says when we're hovering over this item, and if its class is equal to universal, how it's spelt here, don't show the restriction tooltip because it doesn't make sense to, right? It doesn't, it wouldn't make sense to show restriction in red letters universal. It just doesn't make sense. So, this is all handled by the script and by the the event here. So you never need to change any of this stuff here. Okay, so take some comfort in, comfort in that. You never have to do it. Um, Tooltip attribute, this is something you do have to change. Um, but basically the bones are here for you. But when we go into the equip items, and we go into other items that have attributes, you'll see what all this means here. Um, it's very simple. Uh, buying and selling, obviously there's uh, the custom events are here for you for buying and selling. Um, so uh, let's go into the item here. So identified is a simple bool that I don't control. This is something that's on an item that you guys can physically edit and work off of just like Diablo. So if you want things to be identified and you can set values that way and you want a custom event in here that says if identified equals true, do X, Y, Z, you can. But right now this bool does nothing. So this can be on or off at any point in time and it does nothing. I just put it in there strictly for you guys. Um, now the item ID, um, th we're gonna get into this when we get into adding items to the database. But basically what this does is when we're saving and loading items, when we save items, we save the item ID from the database. So that way we know what item to pull back from, right? Uh, it probably just doesn't make any sense to you guys right now, but it will later on when we get to that. Just know that we can, we tag our items with IDs. Um, so uh, that's that. So prefixes and suffixes. Um, we'll get into more when we get into these items over here. But prefixes and suffixes are prefixes are things that are going to come before the root name. Suffixes are going to come after the root name. So um, in the case of Zealot Mace of Light, we have the root name is going to be Mace. Prefix is going to be zealot. Suffix is going to be of light. And these can be arrays. So if I want this to win this item spawn, if this is this element is more than one, it's going to pull from all these arrays. And it's going to give this item a name from those arrays. So this is a, a very simple system if you're wanting dynamically named items, but you don't want to have to go through the task of you know, giving each one its own crazy script and doing a bunch of crazy nonsense with it. You could just kind of use this item, use the same, you know, strength and attributes that you give this item and all that stuff in the class, but you can give it 10 different names. So technically you kind of have like 10 different items. It's really cool. Um, you know, if you guys want to use it, you can use it. If you don't, then, you know, <laughs> you set these to zero and you kind of just get rid of that if you guys want to do that but it's there if you guys want to use it so for a thing like this obviously we're not using prefixes or suffixes so this item is just going to strictly say wanted town guard members it's a quest item so that way when the game when the item does get instantiated this item name field is going to be set to this so in the case of our infernal mace it's going to take or the zealot mace of light it's going to take zealot space mace space of space light and it's gonna supply this into the item name field. And that's the name of our item, right? So that's what, how this whole system works off. It doesn't work off the prefab name, it works off of what name that gets generated from this stuff. So the prefab name can just be called uh, Mace of Light, 
and you could have like seven things in here for the prefixes. So prefab does not correlate to the information that we have set in here. This is this is all stuff for just the game, right? But this is this does work off the database though when we are working on it. So know that. But like I said, we'll get into that later. Um, on the front of stuff after that, you basically just give your thing an icon. So obviously when we are having the item in the inventory, we want to give it a, you know, cool little sprite. You know, I've given you guys a few in here. All these things, all these icons in here can be used um, in your games. Uh, but do know that I have edited these from the actual game icons. Uh, Game-icons.net website. So this is where we've gotten these from. Um, but no, if you do use these in your game, you do have to credit the appropriate authors if you plan on using this commercially, I believe there's a stipulation. So you know, commercially, you have to credit them. Uh, other than that, we can give this item, oops, I hate it when I do that. Uh, you can give this item a level requirement, like I said in the previous videos. Um, if the level is zero, it's not going to be shown in the tooltip, same as the restriction, the class up here. Um, if it's a level zero, it's not going to be shown. Details it will be shown, so it will kind of just say written by Town Guard. And like I said before, the reason why this is all caps is because the font that I'm using um, only looks good when things are caps. So that's why this is all like that. Uh, excuse me. Okay, now to the vendor information. These three values consist of the vendor information for this item. So. This has nothing to do with equipping, uh, anything like that. It's strictly only vendor stuff. So, can we sell this item? Yes or no? Is this item infinite if this is part of the vendor stuff? Yes or no? If it is infinite and we spam right click on the vendor window, right? So, if we're spamming right click, blah, 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 this item's never going to go away. He'll always have an infinite supply of this item, right? So, this makes no difference. If we have a potion in our stuff, doesn't matter if this is checked it's only for vendors okay currency value now this is for everybody so if we set this to 55 maybe we can't sell it when we sell it um, we're gonna buy this from the blacksmith for 55 and we're gonna sell it to the blacksmith for 55 okay that's that um, let's see here uh, model information we'll get into that when we get into the equips uh, item details this is just letting us know if this is breakable mainly just for equips all this stuff uh, doesn't get set by me because you guys could handle that your own way. But do know that these these items are uh, exposed, obviously, since they're public. So um, if you do decide to use this, and let's say you want your item to start at 15 out of 15 durability, then the you know the more you use your item, you space. All you got to do is just sorry, I'm having hiccups. All you got to do is just um, talk to talk to this item. Um, that you have equipped in the slot it has a reference to this actual item here so you would just reference the durability and you can minus or add from it you know and if the durability is zero you can unequip it from yourself and you know do all that all the logic on that front um, so yeah that's all that the weapon details um you if this is a weapon you have to let us know it's a weapon and you have to, you know give it a damage right Damage does nothing. Same thing as durability. It's something that you could reference uh, for yourself if you plan on doing something with this weapon's damage. Um, so it's just there for you to reference. Same thing with armor uh, for your your armor pieces. It does nothing in the system, but it's there for you to reference if you want to use it. Um, if this does have attributes, which obviously my quest item doesn't, then we need to check this box, and you'll see why how we set up attributes when we do our equip items. Um, last thing we do is we just give it a weight. So this, this scroll is gonna be a one pound, pretty heavy scroll. Uh, we give it a type slot. So it, this thing can be only equipped in slots that have also slot none. And if you guys recall, all of our, all of our back slots are set to type of slot none and type of item none, okay? so. That's how we differentiate where items can be in correlation to the slots. Um, and we just give it a type. So this is a type of item request. Um, we give it a rarity. 
and this is where we set up our rarities. If you want to change this, go into the script, simply change it, right click on the variable, click refactor, it'll change the scripts all throughout all of my scripts that are for this whole system. Okay, so that's all there. So then the drop position is basically when we drag it from our inventory here, we drag it into the void of that, uh, of the negative field. Um, if it's not an inventory uh, bool, then it's basically just going to set this from our player's position, and it is from our player, it's going to set it one forward and one up. So that way we could always give it, you know, a decent spread, if you will. Um, you know, if, that way when you drag it into the scene, it's not going to fly some random plates. It's always going to be placed one forward and one up from the player. Same thing with the rotation. You can set this to any rotation, and it'll... It'll turn it into a, uh, a quaternion for you guys. Um, so it's there if you guys want it to be at some crazy random rotation when you drop it in the world. Um, other than that, um, your item does have to have uh, mesh information, whether it be a child of the item, and you just have the basic collider and rigid body on top, which is how it should be set up, and then you're just model information is a child um, or if it's all on top um, like in this item um, but do know that whenever you are if you're doing a, a a childed model like this make sure there's no collision on the childed model there has to be no collision collision is always handled on the top layer where this script is located because these will get the ridge body and the boss collider are going to get removed when it, the items added to the bag and they're going to get added back when it gets dropped back into the world and it's no longer part of the player. Okay, so do know that that's a big part of this. You're going to run into major issues if you leave any box colliders on the mesh um, because it's going to, it's going to mess up the, the whole layer uh, ray casting system. So, um, other than that, uh, I think that's pretty much it on that front. Yeah, pretty much it. So let's go ahead and check out uh, some of our weapons here. So, um, uh, let's see. Okay, so for our class, this weapon here is restricted to the class of Barbarian. So, since it's not universal, this will show in our tooltip. We're also now tying in attributes of strength and vitality, and these are integers. Okay, so now we know that this is going to use attributes so we can sell this it's going to sell for this amount of value it is shown on our player right and this is relative to the transforms and I have a nice little tool for you guys so you don't have to do this uh, this parent doc you know rotation and position offset stuff uh, manually I can it'll all be done by this nice little wizard I wrote for you guys um, it is breakable it is a weapon. It's not an armor. It does have attributes, as we've defined up here. So these are our attributes. So we do know that we need to look for those. It does have a weight. It's a weapon. It's equipable. It's rare. It's dropped at a 1-1. One, one. Okay? Good to go. Now, apply blocks. When we equip this item, it's going to fire this event called equip item, which we have right here. It's going to say, if the strength is greater than 0 in this uh, variable, and now this is just a fail safe mind you if strength is greater than zero then change the, the the max value strength of our player to the strength of this variable and then we're also going to change the consumable strength of our player to the strength of this attribute so that way it's always our player's attribute is always going to be re reflective of what we currently have equipped or what they've done to themselves mind you okay so that way when we're equipping this item if they have 15 strength it's going to set that max strength to 15 plus 23 and then we're going to set whatever our consumable is which should be if it's currently 15 it'll be 15 plus 23 as well right so that's how we keep those both in check now when we unequip we're only going to need to set the max value, which is value, right? Because if we change the value, the consumable can never be higher than the value. So the consumable will auto-regulate itself 
to what the, the, the max is. So we don't need to waste any logic with adding in the second block here. So we can just put the value here. Um, and obviously, um, in order to do subtraction without having to do another you know, negative variable, is we just times it by negative 1. And then we pretty much have our subtraction uh, already there. So that's how we do the adding of the attributes, which is what we set up right here. Now, in order to show those attributes in our tooltip, we already have our restriction. We never change this, like we said. In the tooltip, we simply need to know how many tooltips we have, right? So from the top, we get the instance of our tooltip in our canvas, which is tooltip menu, apply tooltip. So we get that instance, and we set that instance to uh, nothing, right? So once an instance is basically um, uh, being set here, Right. It's not this instance up here, so don't get us confused. Instance is just being set um, of the instance of the game object we instantiate, which is that attribute thing, if you remember from our second video. So once we have a reference to our tooltip, right, we just refresh whatever previous game object we've spawned. Right? And now we need to know how many tooltips we need to add to our tooltip um, uh, uh, tooltip. <laughs> is that redundant <laughs> anyway so yeah basically we just need to know how many times we need to do this and obviously we do know because if we're looking at our mace here we have two tooltips so that way we need to know this value needs to be two we need to do this two times right and if you guys know loops we index we will we usually index from from zero up so this is gonna it's gonna start at zero give us our first tooltip, right? Which is this logic here. And then it's going to count to one. It's going to give us our second tooltip. And since it's two is technically the max value, it's never going to go past that. So it automatically stops. So a good way to think of this, unless you're not using the one less rule, the good way to think of this is just, if you you simply count how many tooltips you're using, you set that value here, right? So we know we're using tooltip, two tooltips, we set this two. And then we basically just come in here, create the instance of our attribute. We never change this, right? This stays the same. So I saved you guys all the trouble. Never, We never change this line, this line, this if, this top if. We only change this integer. Don't change this, don't change this, don't change this. And we just copy and paste these for however many tooltips that we have, right? And we just then set these names to the tooltip. So from the top, we have strength. So the top one is strength, right? And this is how it's displayed. So it's gonna be displayed in the tooltip as a plus, a plus symbol, plus the count, right, of this thing, plus the actual words, space, strength, right? So this is how it's gonna be displayed. So if this was strength, vitality, dexterity, or strength, dexterity, vitality, energy, then we do strength, this would be dexterity, this would be vitality, and this would be energy, right? So, and then obviously this would be a count of four, right, instead of two. So it's a very simple system. If you guys get confused, just let me know. I mean, it's it's all it's all straightforward. Um, but yeah, that's how you that's how you do the whole tooltip system. Um, uh, and then the buy and sell, you can you know cue any audio or cue any stuff that you guys would like to do here. So the, the events are exposed there for you guys. And obviously, if you guys are getting any lagging in your game, uh, disable these debugs when you create items. Um, especially for all, because on all, all my items, I had these debugs here just for me. Um, and I, <laughs> I forgot to disable the damn things. So if you guys are ever getting any lag issues, it's probably coming from these debugs here, because they're going to be fired. Um, obviously, if you could see here from my things, they're... This one's getting fired, you know, every time we picked up an item. So that's this is for our player in our bag. Um, it's looking for that pickup event right here. Uh, pickup. And you see I have, I have debugs and all these two. So that, that that's probably what would be causing any, you know, slight, you know, those millisecond hiccups that you guys would be getting. But back on topic here. Um, so we already went over the whole just here we're going to go over the the model is shown in the custom editor uh, right now 
but yeah, this that's it's all this whole system is pretty much straightforward. So let's go over just one piece of armor, just so you guys know how to set that up. So uh, it's not this thing is not shown because I just don't have any helmets, so we're just not showing this stuff. It is breakable. It is armor, so it's gonna be it's gonna show defense, right? It's gonna, we have all of our information here. So for the equip here, uh, this also has strength, vitality, and energy. Um, Oh, okay, I was like, it was only showing strength and vitality. I forgot to open up this thing's plot blocks. I was like, hold on a second. So yeah, this so this is actually adding another attribute from our last item. So you guys can kind of see here how to add that third I, that third attribute. Same thing with the unequip. Uh, so we go down to tool tube attribute. We know we have three attributes. So we just basically took that, that last one we did, copied and pasted it, set this to two, right? So we're indexing from zero, so technically it's zero, one, two is a total of three, right? Because we're working off the, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, we're working off the one less bool there. And then we're setting the last one to energy. And then the count of energy in this thing, and then the actual words energy, right? So it can actually look like how we have it set up. Um, God damn it. We, uh, how we actually have it set up in here. That's how it's going to look. Um, so, yep. That's how that's set up. Um, let's look at a resource potion real quick. So this one can sell is infinite. Currency value is six. Resource consumable has a weight of one point five. Has attributes, right? It's gonna give us vitality. So we just no equip, no unequip. Has no tooltip, or actually it does have a tooltip. Um, but since this is a consumable, I just kind of just put bonus vitality, just because that's how I. That's what I have set up for this item now whatever your consumables do is all up to you it's, it's your guys's <laughs> gig so on my consu use consumable i just kind of do the same thing i do for equip but it ne it's never going to go away because this isn't something you unequip right this item gets destroyed when you use it because it's a consumable so when you use this consumable item it's going to give us the attribute vitality right and it's going to change that value and it's going to be forever Right, it's, that's how my consumables are working with my guy here. Um, you know, then it's going to change my consumable to also that to reflect this. So, if you guys want to do it to where it'll give you five health every second, you can, you know, put something in here with, with an if or a, um, a re repeat so many times or a run after, and you could put a counter float thing on here and create another like an update. Uh, function on here and do your own stuff you know it's whatever you guys want for your game but for my game i just have it add to my max vitality for my dude so it's all up to you guys all right so that's the basic rundown of items um for the blocks because this is going to be a pain in the ass and you're going to see why in a second because i know for me it's a pain in the ass coming from scripting and then having to come in here and be like okay add common custom add common custom add common custom and do this for each item because each one is looking for an event to fire and these do have to be in there so what i've done for you guys is when you do create an item these texts here will automatically get set in the script so you don't have to type these out but what you do have to do however is you do have to fill all these out but what you can do since i've already made a bunch of sample items for you guys is just come in here if you're do doing something that doesn't have attributes, just copy this block here, copy the component, and then paste it on your item. So you don't have to come in here and create each one of these events. It's just a time saver. Same thing for items that have, you know, attributes. Obviously, your stuff would be different from mine, but the principle still applies. Cop just copy the component, paste it over, and then edit all my stuff out, you know, to replace, you know, what's pertinent in your game. So uh, do know that you know, that is going to save you guys a lot of time so you don't have to come in here and do these things by hand um, but what we're going to do right now is we're actually going to make the items from the item editor and we're going to do it all from scratch we're going to add it to the database so you guys can see physically what you need to do to create an item in the game using uh, this system that i made for you guys so what we're going to do is we're actually going to take one of these axes right Hate how these are two cubes.
yeah, let's actually do this here. Let's create an empty game object. And this is using my toolbar that I made for you guys here. Uh, basically what it does when you create an empty game object, it'll pop up a little window so you can rename that object that you have selected. Um, we'll just rename it uh, X. Man, my spelling is terrible right now. We'll rename this. Paste all that stuff outside everything here, put those inside there. All right? So now we have kind of just like a, a fresh quote unquote axe here. Actually, we don't actually have that because these rotations are pretty. You guys are probably cringing right now. I'm trying to basically, you know, give you guys a simple solution here without having to, you know, let me just do the simple, simple way here. Resell these. My rotation was off on that empty game object, uh, so it would have been off on the actual uh, item for you guys. Okay. So rotations should all be good here, right? Yeah, they're good. Okay. Uh, okay. So uh, what we're gonna do here is okay. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come into the editor, go into the apply inventory tab that should be added at the very bottom or very top right here, um, and basically we're just gonna we're gonna come to the item wizard tab. We're going to look at some of these tips, and we're going to basically follow the wizard from step one to two, all the way down to step three. All right? So how does this work? Well, basically, follow the steps. So we need a base object to work off of, right? Well, we have our base object. If this was the, the thing that had all of our art on it, we'd be solid, right? Um, so what we can do is we can just come in here, drag and drop that into there. So bam, we have our base object. Now what we need to do, and this is a big decision that you need to make for your game, is how are we going to ID our objects, right? If you look at games like Fallout, Skyrim, XYZ type games, you know, you, you're going to have some sort of database and some sort of ID system for these items, right? If you're thinking on the terms of Fallout, you know, if you've already used the console commands, you know, you do the console command like player.addItem space four zeros, you know, and then like one five A B three space one, and then I'll add one of that item, and it'll look in the database for that item ID, and then it'll give you that item, right? So you need to figure out what your database is gonna basically look like. What what is your database gonna gonna uh, be for when the players, you know, if they want to use console commands in your game, you know, are you gonna support that? So it's a decision you need to make. So basically how I've done all my stuff is you can see here. So what my ID is, is just called apply, and then I just go off of weapons. So I go, I just do three zeros because I never know how many weapons I'm going to have. Right? And then let's go to my weapons just so everything can be through. So this is going to be, let's say, the fourth weapon that I've made. All right? So we'll do one, two, three, four, and then we'll do, oops, we'll do capital W because naming does matter so this is a weapon which is the w and then we leave it so this is the id now the prefix is going to be what's going to separate the id from the name okay so it's going to be id prefix which is an underscore for me it could be whatever you guys want but for me it's a prefix and then we're going to give it a name so that like i said in the other tutorial the name is not reflective of the in-game item name. So you can give your item a name of, you know, like heavy axe, but like the actual name that gets instantiated inside of the actual 
you know, game with like the prefixes and suffixes that come with the item itself. Couldn't be like, you know, heavy acts of poisonous death, you know, something crazy like that. So this right here is just for the database. It's for the database and for the prefab. So that way when we know we're instantiating game objects, we're looking to the database and we're gonna get that prefab depending on the ID, the prefix, and the name. Okay, it's pretty straightforward. If you have any questions, let me know. So this name is just gonna be something super generic. All right, so it's gonna be called uh, X, I guess. So it's gonna be called X, right? So we complete step one. Now, what does step one do? Let's see. Complete step one. Well, we obviously did something in the hierarchy, so let's see what it does. Well, what it did is it created a Plybox component on, it looks like an empty game object, right? Um, created a Plybox component, created apply inventory item script, filled in all of this information, saved us a little bit of time, right? Good stuff. Um, didn't give us our reference to our blocks, right? So we do need to drag and drop our item, plop it into there. One more time, drag and drop, plop it into there, okay? Now, we're staying here, because this does have to be done in all one go. You can't save the scene and do some crazy stuff. So don't undo from this window, okay? Now, what we do from here is, since my... Actually, we'll, we'll leave that. So, just for demonstration. So, what it did is obviously, since our item ID was ply 0004w, it automatically input our ID for us, which is good. So, it's a little bit of time. So, this thing is will have a suffix um, um, one, and we'll name it of pain. So, this is going to be called axe of pain. We're gonna give it a sprite of, I don't have an ax, but we'll just give it a thing of that. The level of requirement, let's say we'll give it a level of requirement of 14, and this x is painful. Um, okay, these all get set at runtime, so don't ever mess with these. Uh, except for identified, you can do whatever you want with identified. But don't ever don't touch equipped. Um, we can sell this. It's not infinite for our vendor. Um, and let's say this is sell for four hundred and twelve. Now we stop here. Don't do anything. What we do next is what we can do is come into here, locate our player, drag our player into the game, open up our bag find our, our whatever slot we're wanting to bind this to, click it, find that transform, take the transform, drag it into step two, mount point, and let's read. Here you can supply the item, its mount point, its mount position, specified on the character, and test its transform. So, what this is going to do is it's going to take our item, right? It's going to take our art axe, it's going to send it to this transform right hand dock. It's going to parent it and it's going to zero out its rotation so that way we can test it and see okay what is the actual information that needs to be um, here for this item right so it's a nice little a nice little test so what we're going to do is we're going to click bind to mount so you'll see that the, the base thing that holds all the script and the collision is still here but this was all parented and centered to it right so let's come to the scene center on this and it was centered to our hand and our dock so from here what we can do is we can actually start rotating it so we know that this needs to look right and it needs to look something like this right this is how it should be if we're in T pose which is what we're going off of this item needs to look something along the lines of um, this I believe this may look a little crazy in the game but yeah it should look something like that right so let's say we're good let's come back to the editor we haven't pressed play we haven't done anything crazy we haven't lost any of this data right 
So if we don't like what we've done and we've really messed this up, we can reset the bind and it'll set this object back to our item, right? And then we can just rebind it to the mount and it'll redo that process. If we like what we've done, we like the we like the offset, we like the rotation, we like it all, right? We can complete step two. Complete step two. It unparents it, sends it back to our item, and it automatically applies all of that data that we've just put in there for the transform. And it'll put it all in there for us. It's a huge time saver. Please use this method because <laughs> it does save time. So now we're just going to make sure that it's shown. So we're good to go. Now, step three. Um, what we need to do is we need to finalize the item's properties, colliders, etc. via the inspector. So that means the ply blocks, setting up all the ply blocks setting up all this information, making sure the collider's all good to go, and then, you know, going from there. So what do we need to do? We need to come to the item, since it was set to position 000, and set to rotation 000. Uh, we need to come to the collider, because this is what the collider that gets generated, it's, I think it's one by one by one. Yeah, so we obviously need to fix this. So let's come up. Uh, do a little manual labor here. So, size. Let's just do something super rough for now. It probably sounded a little awkward. Let's just change this. Uh, Alright. That's pretty good. Let's go up to the manual mode and just set this down a little bit. Okay, good enough. Right, so the collision is all set up for our guy, rigid body, and I think we could just set this up like that. I don't think it matters. Um, so yeah, that's all good. So now what we need to do is we need to come, uh, we can delete this, don't need that anymore. We need to come into our, um, one of our items that we've already made, right, either prefab or what have you. Um, and we'll just copy over the ply blocks from him and plop it onto our dude, paste the values. This is going to be set to universal. Whoops, one text. Universal. Okay. Good to go. So, without messing with any of this information, which we will mess with, um, what we're going to do is we're going to just complete step three so we can get out of the way. So, Collapse that. So now, save the path. After we've done all of our collision, done all of our information here, right? Let's say we had our ply blocks all done, right? We need to save it somewhere. So what this system automatically does, it'll fill out assets forward slash for you. So it'll take your project, it'll um, save it to the assets directory. Now, if you don't specify anything else, if this field is blank, it's just going to save it in the very root of your assets folder, right? So it's to save it right inside here. But if you want a folder that you want to keep this into, you know, you can specify that and which you need to do because this does have to be placed in a resources folder and the capitalization does matter. So what I mean by that is you'll see in my items, you know, I like to categorize all my stuff. You can have this in one folder or 50 folders, right? But if you want it to be neat, you know, you kind of just want to do it the way that I'm doing it here. So my stuff is put into ply inventory, or it's put into uh, like this. It's put into inventory, inventory system. God, I'm terrible at spelling right now. Forward slash, which is signifying that we're going into a subfolder. Prefabs, forward slash. Apply inventory forward slash apply oops, apply items forward slash weapons forward slash re forward slash research. So now it should create apply zero 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 four w x at this directory. Let's see if it does. I hope to God it does. And it does. So it'll create it from at the directory and delete it from our scene. So you'll now see 
that at that directory we now have our delicious looking axe. So now we're done with the item wizard. What we need to do now is add it to the database. So in order to add this to the database, locate down here into the scripts folder, right? So collapse all this nonsense. Inventory system, scripts, apply game inventory, IO development, XML data, resources, apply item database. Okay, good to go. Double click that. It should open up in modern development by default or in uh, Visual Studio 2015, Notepad, etc. etc. You know, so that's that. Now, what we do have here is I hope this shows in the recording is an XML database. Super simple. Without getting too much into it, uh, which I will do a tutorial on XML, which is specifically going to be in my quest editor that I'm going to be giving you guys, is basically you can give it some parameters and then give those parameters information and then read back that information. So basically for our database here, as you'll see in our item list, this is the current database, right? You can't add things manually inside here. It specifically looks for this file and populates this list, right? So you'll see that our axe isn't in here, but it will be. So let's go to our prefabs after we've already opened up our apply item database. Okay, we'll come to our thing. Okay, what do we know our item ID is? Well, we do know it's apply 0004W. So we'll control C or copy. Okay, actually we won't copy from there. We'll actually come here, and since this is ID number three, come at that end one, make a space, paste, right? We'll change this to four W, or if you want to be precise, we'll just copy our ID from here, double click, and then you know control V or paste, right? And since we know this item's name is ID underscore axe, we'll just copy axe, take that into the name, paste axe. Is that not working? I hate the mod develop so much. I really hate mod develop. So we'll just we'll paste axe in here. We type it manually. As long as you know that's the exact name of it. So now we've added this to the database. So if we save the database and we come back into apply game you'll see that when we refresh, this axe has now been added to the database and now we know we're solid. So this item has been added to our game. We're all set to go. This item can now be used. It can be saved with my load save system. It can be generated for vendors. It can do everything that any other item can do. That was it. We've just created items. I don't know if that was too much for you guys. I don't know if it was too lengthy. Let me know. You know, I, I, if I can simplify it, you know, I'll see if I can find any optimizations on that front. But, you know, I try to make it as simple as possible for you guys with the method that I chose to go with it. Um, so just let me know your thoughts on all that. Um, but for now, uh, we're just going to go into the scene here. And we'll fly back over to our level. And let's just, just go ahead and drop our item, our newly made item into the world. Give it a little bit of rotation here. Okay, so this is our new item. So now we already know it's it has a prefab uh, link. We put it in our starting items for the scene here, right? And now we can actually edit those ply blocks components. So let's say we just wanted to give us strength and dexterity. We want to give us 15 strength and 32 dexterity. So we know we have strength and dexterity. So let's just get rid of vitality. Okay, looking good. Unequip, get rid of vitality, consumable, good, 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 good. Uh, we only have two tooltips, so we set that to two. Uh, make sure this one's strength, since strength is the top one. Uh, and this order doesn't really matter. It's just how I have it set up in my game. Um, this top one's always strength, dexterity, vitality, and energy. That's how I have them ordered. So that's how I like to have them ordered in my attribute thing. So we just open up the box and Get back to our attribute. So we already know we're only doing two attributes. So we have strength, dexterity, and we'll just delete this 
this uh, bottom one down here. And we'll save the prefab and make sure that all this information is good to go. And we could change this at any time. So obviously you wanna uh, set this back to what it was, make it something super low. Uh, 22 has attributes and then we'll go ahead give it the rest of our information here since we didn't do that before. So weight, uh, we'll give it a weight of six pounds. It's gonna be in the weapon slot since that's the that's the mount that we optimized it for. And we'll make it a legendary, why not? We'll give it a drop position of one and one. So we'll save the prefab instance. Um, I do believe how I have it set up right now is I don't have it set up to recursively iterate through the children and the grandchildren to change layers. So actually what we're going to do here is we're going to take those cubes, how I was saying before, and we're going to just... Um, actually, I don't... Is this going to work? Yeah, it'll work. What am I thinking? Yeah, this going to work. Um, since, because basically how I have it set up right now is I don't have it set to recursively kind of go through there. I put that code in there for you guys, so if you want to do it, just um, uncomment that code out. But basically the code that I have set up for this is just, a, it's going to go one one uh, child down. It's not going to go to, to grandchildren or children of those children and things like that. So it's only going to go to the children of the root item itself. Um, so do do know that. So that's just how I have it set up, just because <laughs> this is what I do at that time. So um, if you want to do it the other way, just look up how to recursively iterate through children and grandchildren. It's pretty simple. So let's actually save that prefab instance. Um, so that way all that's set. Um, let's let me just what time. Damn, we're about 52 minutes. Okay, yeah, because this should be the last like major tutorial let me uh check here if you guys want to look and see everything i got planned here this is pretty much all the tutorial stuff uh this is basically whoops let me just save that to bugs this is basically just the only bug that i've really run into is just if you spam uh drag and drop uh, whatever that key is um and you kind of just you accidentally drag onto another slot it'll just give you a, a little uh it's like a warning or an error, I can't remember. Um, but it's totally harmless, doesn't do it, doesn't break your game at all. Uh, these are the features that I have planned for you guys here. Um, and then these are the, the blocks that I, the other blocks I have to make. Oh yeah, that's right, I have to make a video about the custom blocks. I'll probably do that in the next video. But yeah, these are the other ones that I have planned to make for you guys. Uh, this is the only other stuff I've done for you guys. Okay, so back to this, so I don't get off track again. Um, let's play this. Uh, let's see what we got going on here. It's full screen, okay. Load, good. Okay, so we got our axe. Click it, pick it up, go to our inventory, drag and drop it, right click, everything's working, drop it into the world, good, good. Has a value of 412, 15 strength, 32 dexterity, has the level requirement of 14, damage 22, has a durability of five out of five. It's a slot of weapon, rarity, legendary. Uh, has our details, has our weight, has all that information. The weight, um, it's pretty small on my screen. So it's probably the same on your guys' screen. Um, it's it's kind of there, it's at the bottom. It's the second to the top one, so. Um, yeah, just let me uh, let me know what you guys think. But yeah, I mean, that's pretty much that's pretty much the whole system. I mean, it's really simple. Other than that, you don't have to do any other manual setup. Uh, it's just whatever else you guys want to customize for everything. So, um, yeah, so like I said, this is what we're going to be going over in the next video. Um, we already got through all this stuff, pretty much all the IO stuff. So we're just going to be looking over uh, more in depth of the persistence and how to add actually your own persistence. So, you know, if you guys want to Know, get into doing some more scripting stuff. I'll show you guys how to take my loader that I made and you guys can use it for your own uses. So that's it for this video. It's gone on way too long. I probably should have broken this up, but um, yeah. So 
I will see you guys in the next video. Like I said, the next video is going to, I'll probably hit it up, hit it up with the, um, uh, the custom blocks, just a general overview of each one of these. And then we'll go into the saving and persistence. So I'll see you guys in the next video.